Okay guys, welcome back to another build instruction video. This right here is a wing foil board. This is the 4.6. So it's four foot, six inches long, 27 inches wide. And this one is 66 liters. There's a whole bunch of other sizes of this board. They're all kind of the same design, just scaled a bit differently. And the build process is the exact same for each. So it doesn't matter which one in particular you're building. Uh, we're going to follow the steps in this video and in the end we'll we'll come out with a great board. The bat with a new concept compared to the other boards we have, the smaller foil boards. Uh, you can see this is in three separate pieces. And the main reason why is it makes it a lot easier and way cheaper to ship to you. So that's why it's in three different pieces and they get put together really easy and once they're glued together it's just a, one piece of foam again, and then we're go going to get into the build process. So we can see here, I'm holding the front section of the board, and then this is the section that it fits to. And when these are final shaped in the shop, they, we put a small dab of hot glue in certain areas to join the pieces together. And then we give the board its final shape so that when it fits together, it's perfectly fitting and it's really nice and smooth. And the great thing about these is they almost act as like Lego pieces. So this piece fits right into the foam holes right here. And you know exactly when you have it in the right place because it really fits right in there. And then you will 100% know, okay, that's exactly where it's supposed to go. So that really helps you aid and line up these pieces when we glue them together. So if we're just going with the board blank, it will come with the tracks and the track box as well as the slot nuts to go in there. So that's what it comes with standard. There are options to select the fiberglass and the epoxy and the whole build kit. So if you want everything you need to build this board to come with the board, you can select that as well. So please make sure you know what you're selecting on the website. Okay, so taking a step back, you can see I have the board stacked on top of itself, standing almost vertically, and we're leaning up against the board stand in the back there. And so you can see I can just pop off the sections like that. And so we're going to start by gluing up the board, and we're starting from the tail and working our way up to the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up some thickened epoxy. I'm going to pour a line of it going in between the seam, stick these two pieces together. I'm going to tape them in place so they don't move. And then I'm going to do the top section right after that so we can cure the board together all in one step. So real quick before we get started here, we're taking a uh, zoomed in look at the edge of that board. I like to use a masking tape, works well to hold the pieces together. Also, duct tape can be used, but first try with masking tape, and if you need a little bit more, move up to duct tape. Uh, one important key thing when gluing this board together is we do not want a lot of epoxy. Actually, we don't want any, preferably, squeezing out of the joint because we're going to come in with a very, very final sand if there's anything that needs to be smoothed out before glassing. And we're also going to come in before glassing and fill that seam with more thickened epoxy and that will fill any gaps, any slight inconsistencies with the gaps and that will allow for very easy glassing when we're ready to do that. So in order to, to have that seam be as tight as possible, and in the end, when the board is painted, you'll have no idea there's even a seam there to begin with. So the idea is to get it as tight as possible. And the easiest way to do that is when we have thickened epoxy, we're just going to pour one line of it going in the center here of the board. You really don't need that much epoxy uh, because we want to, again, we want to avoid that squeeze out and just a little bit going that whole length will really hold that seam together. And especially when we come in and fill the rest of the joints, it will give it all the strength, more than enough strength than it's going to need. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about in one minute, right when I pour the epoxy. All right, so taking a look here, we can just see the consistency of our thickened epoxy. 
and it's pretty much hanging on the stick just some globs coming off here and there so this is about where we want it and we know it's not going to run when we put it down in a line so that is the whole idea here and we don't have to be absolutely perfect but we want to focus on getting a good portion of this epoxy down the center of this board trying to stay away from the edge. All right, so there we have it. And you can see, you might not be able to tell, but it's piled in pretty thick and pretty high because I do expect when I put the piece on and kind of compress them together just a bit, that will start to spread out and fill the seam a bit. So that's why I gave extra room going around the edges there. So moving to put this piece on, I'm pretty much just going to line up this edge right here. And if you just wiggle it around ever so slightly, you can feel those indents lining up exactly where they're supposed to be. And I'm just putting a little bit of pressure going downwards just to squeeze a little bit of that epoxy and spread it out just a bit. And now we can see it's almost hard to tell where the joint even was. Of course, you can still see it just a little bit, but we can't feel it at all on the deck along the rails it's gone to. And if I feel around behind the board, it's also completely flush. So I now know it's exactly where it's supposed to be. And now I'm just going to reinforce this with a little bit of tape just to make sure it stays right where it is while it cures. So one quick little tip to help you do, uh, put in the tape and really close that seam up is I have this masking tape and I'm first going to stick it just to the top side here. Make sure it's really stuck on there. And then with this hand up here, I'm going to put some pressure downwards on this piece to really close up the seam. And then with this free hand, I'm just going to pull a little bit on this tape and stretch it nice and tight and then press it down into the board. And so that gives us, that gives us a little bit of tension in this tape holding it together. And you'd be surprised how much you can actually pull things together. And if you find you need more, you can always add as much tape as you want. But usually just two on the front and two on the sides is plenty to get the job done. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing the top section of the board and just as before I'm just going to be placing a thick line of epoxy going across the center here. Okay, and so I'm just going to take the section of the board, line up these edges a bit and just kind of shake it down and press into place. Everything's nicely lined up. Especially doing the top side after having glued the bottom on, we just want to make sure not to mess up the joint down below by pushing too hard. So now I'm just going to gently tape this section together just as we did before. And so real quick, one last time, I'm going to demonstrate the taping procedure. You should be able to get these pretty tight. Just get them as tight as you can. Uh, there inevitably will be a little bit of a gap, but we're going to completely fill that. Once it is glued together, we're going to fill that again with even thicker epoxy, and that will come out completely smooth and flush so we don't have any problems glassing. But again, the best way to do this is to just stick the top half on, make sure we have it nice and stuck. And now with this hand right here, I'm just gently pushing down, straight down the best I can. And now I'm going to pull this tight, not too tight, but just a little bit tight, and then press that down. And now the piece of tape is under a bit of tension, holding this and compressing this a little bit tighter together. All right, so now we have both seams glued and the board is taped. Now I have this standing pretty much vertically straight up and down. That's the best position to leave it in, maybe leave it leaning up against a wall, but try to get it as straight up and down as you can. 
so that there's no forces bending anything apart. So that's it, and depending on your temperature, you probably want to leave this for about three to four hours, and then the board will be safe to remove the tape and start handling it to move on to the next step. And so next, what we're going to do is we're going to glue in the track box down below, which is very easy to do. And then at the same time, while we're at it, we'll make sure that the shape of the board is exactly how we want things to be. We'll give any slight rough areas a final sand with some high grit sandpaper. All right, guys, so now that the seams have cured up, we pretty much have a nice board blank ready to go. So before we install the track box and fill in these seams, this is the time where if you want to slightly tweak the shape or if you want to change uh, some of these angles or change the rail shape, or if you didn't get a perfect match, this is the point when you're going to want to give the board its final sand. Because once we put this epoxy in the seams, we can't really sand the board anymore uh, because the foam will sand away faster than the epoxy seam. And then we'll end up with a seam line in our final board. And we don't, we want to try our best to avoid that. So right now what I'm going to do is these boards come, you could glass this just right now as you want, but what I'm going to do is take some pretty fine sandpaper. This I believe is, is 220 grit. And I'm just going to go around the board and smooth out any areas that I think are particularly a little bit rough. And it's just really easy, nothing more than nothing more than things like that right there what i just did so i'm just going to go around probably do the rails too just to make sure that everything's nice and blended and smoothed out perfectly okay so now we're going to glue in the track box and the tracks and fill this seam and then do these seams as well you don't have to do these all at the same time and i'm not going to i'm just going to do one step and then the next and then the next but you don't have to wait for things to fully cure in between these steps so the first thing i did is i put my track box in the area it's supposed to be and i'm just making sure that things are relatively flush a millimeter or two is okay if if some if something's um off there but if something's dramatically off to the point where you think you did something wrong or if something is wrong with um the parts uh, we might want to fix that before we glue it in so i already have some epoxy mixed up here and you can see i once again added some thick thickener to it and this is about the consistency we want here and i'm just going to start putting it in rather thick on the floor of the mounting area and this is one place where uh, you can't really have enough epoxy so uh, we want a nice strong bond here and again we're going to get some when we press the track box down into this area uh, a, lo a lot of this epoxy is going to move and squeeze about so as long as we have it built thick that it's able to do that we'll have a nice bond to that so I'm happy with how that is right there and now I'm just going to take the track box place it and, and so I'm going to force it this way, just kind of pull it towards the back of the board here, because I want this back edge to be tight. And that mainly just lines the tracks and keeps them square with the board, because there is a little bit of wiggle room in there, but as long as you pay a little bit of attention, you can get them pretty square. And so I'm just pressing down a little bit. I'm not pressing down really hard because uh, that might damage our board, but I'm just pressing down a bit to ensure that everything's sticking really well. All right, and the next step is just to add some epoxy into the actual track area itself. And these fit rather tight and we don't want a ton of squeeze out. So about what you see there, 
is great and if you don't get it perfect uh, there's no need to really worry because there's ways to to fill in and get more epoxy in there later we just want to make sure that certainly the bottom side has enough epoxy and so these you press down a bit and I'm not sure if the camera is showing it but we are getting some epoxy to come squeezing just to the the edge there and that's right where we want it if you have too much uh, make sure see we have some squeeze out right here and if we have way too much uh, we want to avoid having that epoxy flow into our tracks that would be a bit of a problem so as long as we do that things will be in good shape so now those are installed as well I'm going to continue to make sure that this is lined up because I just moved it a bit there all right, so that's great right there. All right, and the last thing we're going to do here is just to fill the seam. So I've made even thicker epoxy, and so this stuff pretty much is not going to flow where we put it um, because we just wanna fill some of these seams here. So first, there are these two little screw holes, and that's where the this piece is mounted onto the machine to get cut. And so I'm going to fill those in now. And a cheap squeegee like this works great. Cardboard uh, can also make a little squeegee. So one of those tools will certainly be helpful here. And so I'm just going to fill in this slight gap that's going around this box here. And it's very easy to do. You just kind of first cake a whole bunch on there. And then we're gonna come over with the squeegee and it's gonna clean up the area and also shove the epoxy down into that seam. And so now with our squeegee, hopefully we can see this here, I can come in any areas that there's epoxy that didn't get in, I'm going to use the squeegee to pretty much shove epoxy down in. And you can see how much we scraped off there. That's perfect because now this is nice and flush. And that's exactly how we want it and filled in. So I'm gonna do that and go all the way around. Okay, so just as we filled the seam on the track area, I'm going to fill these seams that join the board. So again, this epoxy is pretty thick. It's not really going to run anywhere. And as the track box is curing, I'm just going to do the bottom side of the board here because I obviously can't flip the board yet. And once the, once the track box area cures up, I'll flip the board and do the seams on the other side. So really the key here is just to kind of do the same thing as the track box with the squeegee, uh, rather light pressure, and just follow that seam packing epoxy in there and then also squeezing away the excess. And so you can see right there, you can see a little bit of sheen where the epoxy is now wet with the foam, but you can also see that the seam is now totally filled in and it's really, really smooth and there's no excess epoxy kind of hanging out there. And so that is going to make, once we glass over that, that whole seam will completely disappear. So I'm going to do this for this whole seam here and then that second seam up forward. All right, so up here on the forward seam, we can see it's nice and filled in, nice and even. There's no excess epoxy or drips. There's no drips of epoxy anywhere on the board. Uh, that's something you wanna look out for. All right, so that's all we can do for now. We're making pretty quick progress on this board. Um, I'm going to let this cure up, and then I'm going to flip the board, do the seams on the other side, and then all I have to do is lightly sand any imperfections in the track mount area, and then it's going to be on to glassing the board. All right, so the board is flipped over, and now I'm just going to add the epoxy into the seams on this side of the board. Uh, it's the exact same way that we did the bottom. I'm just going to do that to the top side now. 
All right, so now all the seams are fully cured and I just took some very, very light sandpaper and just went over them to knock down any little high spots. Sometimes the foam dust kind of hardens and you can feel that. And so if you just very lightly skim that with sandpaper, it really smooths it out. So those are all set and ready to go. The only other thing I need to do is to sand out our track mount. So we have it in here pretty flush, but there's a little bit of some drips right here that I'm going to sand smooth. And I'm just going to make sure the tracks are completely smooth and flush with the wood as well. And if there are any edges, like right here feels just a little bit higher than the foam, I'm going to be very careful with um, some sanding and make sure I'm just sanding the wooden portion and not down into the foam. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna completely smooth this out the best I can. Okay, so it's now nice and completely smooth and I got rid of it, all the dust that was on this area after, after sanding. And so now what I'm going to do is just take some masking tape and mask off the tracks. So just one piece going right over the tracks. Press it down nice and firm so we get a nice stick. And so now I'm taking a blade, any sharp blade will work, and I'm just going to trim away the excess tape. So through the tape, you can kind of see where the actual groove is. And so I'm probably gonna aim to go about three millimeters, uh, have about three millimeters of tape stuck to the actual track, and I'll remove the rest of that. So you can always come back and clean this up if your lines aren't perfectly straight. So you can see this is kind of what we're going for here. And we're gonna do that same thing on the other side. All right, so we're taped off, everything looks great. And the next thing we're going to do is start to cut the glass to go onto the board. Okay, so now we are going to get into the lamination process with the fiberglass. And we're going to start doing by doing the bottom. And as we already showed, we covered up our tracks with some tape and now what I'm going to do is flip the board over and apply a tape uh, which is going to separate the two halves of the board as we laminate. Alright so we have the board uh, right side up so we flipped it over and I'm going to apply the tape going around this top edge here and so basically we're going to wrap the rails twice so the rails are going to be twice as thick as say the deck and the bottom side of the board and that rounded shape being so thick is in like a box structure is going to act as a major strength or source of strength for the board going from nose to tail so double wrapping all the rails around the board uh, gives it strength and also these are where impacts are most likely to occur. And so if it's twice as thick, uh, it'll be twice as strong and ding resistant there. So nothing too, nothing too fancy here, just uh, masking tape or painter's tape. And I'm going to try to keep it generally pretty even going around the entire board. And I wanna be more, pretty much just on the top edge here of this board. So I just lightly kind of have this tape there and that's about where I want it to be. And then I'm going to come back and make sure that it's firmly pressed onto the foam and I'm going to go all the way around the board just like this. All right, so you can see we have the tape going all the way around the board. And what this serves as is when we uh, tuck the fiberglass around the rail, it's going to come up onto this tape and that's where the fiberglass is going to end. And so when the board gets to the right stage where it's where that fiberglass is about 60% to fully cured, we're going to come in with a very sharp razor blade and cut right on this tape line. And then that'll give us a nice clean cut uh, separating 
that bottom layer and then we'll be able to flip the board over and then do the top and so i just like this tape because it makes that process much easier and cleaner to do so just like other boards that uh, we build here uh, each board is going to come with its own kind of detailed instruction sheet as to how many layers we're putting and where uh, for the boards it's very simple with the foils it gets a little more complicated but the boards Generally, it's uh, three top, three bottom, and this is four ounce glass. Uh, that usually makes things really strong and durable. So that's what we're doing. And uh, for the foil boards, just around the track area, I like to put a patch right here. So you can kind of see we're maybe going three inches or so, or maybe 10 centimeters, kind of just larger than the track. And that's just going to reinforce this general area. Um, so that's what we want our patch to, to look like. All right, so now you can see I cut a large piece of cloth and I have it just draped over the board here. And so we have a lot of excess going around the entire board. And as we mentioned earlier, we have that tape line on the underside of the board. And so we want to trim this piece of this fiberglass so that the edge ends up right on the tape line. So we're going to do that one layer at a time. I find it easiest to just trim a layer and then kind of roll it up, put it to the side, do the next layer. Uh, I find that to be the easiest way to do it. So we're going to trim all the way around so that we end up right on that tape. So taking a look here, we have trimmed this side of the board. And so if I am to wrap and tuck this under the rail, we can see there's not that much extra and it ends up being right on that tape line going along the underside of the board. So that's about where you want it. It's probably better to aim on the shorter side than the longer side because we are going to wrap this area twice. So if you are shorter, it's better to go land short of the tape than shoot over the tape. Um, but either or, it's not the end of the world, but uh, that's what we're looking for. All right, so we're trimmed up here and you can see I have not cut relief cuts into the corners. If you've seen some other builds on this channels uh, on this channel you'll know I usually cut the relief cut before glassing and because this is a bit of a larger board I think it might be difficult to line get the relief cuts to line up perfectly on the corner as say you're putting on a layer on top of a already wet layer it might be difficult to do that so I'm actually going to wet out all these layers first and then cut in the relief cuts there's really no problem with doing that. It's just after doing so, you're going to want to wipe your scissors off really well so the epoxy doesn't dry on them and make them useless. So don't worry about the relief cuts for now. We're going to do that during the layup process. So as mentioned, that's one layer down and I'm just going to gently and neatly roll these going backwards. And then that way I'll easily be able to put them back on and do one layer at a time. All right, so we have all the layers trimmed out and one thing I'm also going to do is I like to add on the corners when we put in those relief cuts. Sometimes it can be difficult to get them to lay down perfectly flat. And so I've found adding just an extra little patch onto those corners makes them easier to lay down and clean up later on. And it also adds a little bit of extra glass to the corners so again, that's an area that'll most likely get bumped. So I basically will just cut a few of these, at least one for each corner. And I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna make these probably larger than I need them to be. And it's just good to have these cut and ready to go so that you can kind of do it all in one step later on. So I'm just gonna, cut some of those and put those off to the side. All right, so we're ready to start here. You can see I have the first layer. I folded it up so that we can get our track patch on. So I'm also going to take the patch and just kind of put that up as well because the first thing we're going to do is get some epoxy in this area and fill in any of the nooks and crannies that didn't uh, so for example, we didn't really get a lot of squeeze out here when we installed the tracks And so I'm going to first fill that in with epoxy to eliminate any bubbles 
that might show up. All right, so as mentioned, we're just going to get some epoxy worked into this area first. Just kind of lay it on nice and heavy and just work it around with a squeegee into those areas that didn't get full. And so with that done, we can now take our patch, kind of place it where we want it to go. And now work this in. That is now handled. It's not fully soaked out, but that is fine. I'm going to get the first layer of glass positioned. Get rid of all the wrinkles that I can. Now your first layer is going to soak up a lot more epoxy than the next few layers. So just kind of be prepared for the first one to use up a good bit of epoxy. So generally just kind of pour it all out in the middle and then we're going to gently work it out to all the edges. So now I'm just going to start taking any of the excess from that flat area and start working it down towards the sides of the boards, the side of the board, um, and then Basically, we're going to wet out first focus on wetting out all of the fiberglass that is in contact with the board. And then we're going to soak out the excess glass that we're going to wrap alongside the rails. So you can see here, we just take a little bit of excess from the flat area, and then we're going to push it down along the side of the board. And then at the very end, we're going to soak this stuff out. So that's kind of the list of priorities here. Okay, so now all the foam area is wetted out and now I'm going to show how we wet out this and then wrap it under. I do not like to waste a ton of epoxy. So usually you'll see guys, they'll pour a lot of epoxy and it just kind of flows and then drips off of this. Uh, that's great if you're kind of pressed for time but uh, I don't like to waste the epoxy so much and if you're just kind of one-off doing it uh, this isn't a bad way to do so so generally what I like to do is just pour it some epoxy like that and then lift gently lift up the edge and just kind of squeegee it out onto the overhanging glass so you can see here it's getting soaked out and I'll just go like this all the way around the board and once I get these fully soaked out we're going to tuck it underneath the board all right so we're fully soaked out going all the way around and so starting from the sides more towards the center of the board I'm just going to take the squeegee and wrap the fiberglass up onto that tape that we placed and so from the center working back I'm going to do that all the way to the corner and then once I get all the way back I'm going to come and do this all the way to the front corner and so I'm going to do it on this side and the other side okay, so we can see I've wrapped up to about here and then I did also did the back as well starting from the center and wrapped to about here. And so you can see what happens in the corners here. You can't really wrap that because it all bunches up. And so that is the point of cutting in a relief. So pretty much where this naturally folds up, I'm just going to take some scissors and cut a line that goes pretty much right on top of that top edge. And so once you do that, you can kind of lift up one area and 
get it to lay down flat. And then you come with the other side and then you'll be able to get that to tuck down. So this is definitely the hardest part, especially if you haven't really done it a lot. And so right here, it's, it looks fantastic. And right up in here is where I'm going to apply that patch, but I'm going to do that at the very end to help smooth things out. So this is layer number one. Uh, we're going to do this on the corners here, and then I'm going to add on, once we get the first layer down, that's the hardest one. I'm going to add on the next two and do the next two together. So with that first layer done and the corners tucked, uh, the next two are going to go on very easy. So I'm just going to line this up, starting from the back, and then roll it forward onto the board. And before I start wetting, any of this out, I'm just going to position it so that everything lines up where we initially cut or get it pretty close and get as many of the wrinkles out as we can. And so you can see if you just very, very gently pull on areas, you can pull out any of the wrinkles. Okay, and with that done, uh, that's the second layer. And now I'm going to put on the last one. And this one you don't have to be as precise with initially because uh, it's not really going to get stuck right onto the bottom. So now that I have them positioned pretty much where they're supposed to be, gently with the squeegee, I am just going to again work to get most of these wrinkles out very gently. And once I have it positioned and most of the wrinkles are gone, I'm going to get more epoxy and then glass up these two layers at the same time, just as we did the first layer. I'm going to wet out the uh, flat surfaces first, and then I'm going to come around, wet out the edges, and then tuck them, and then do the corners. All right, so you can see I got most of the flat areas done, and now I'm just kind of treating that these areas on the side of the board pretty much as their own little section. So I'm dragging any excess epoxy from on top down onto the side and then I'm just working it in along this entire length. So basically just taking epoxy from the center and moving it towards the edges of the board. And then so lastly on the double concave up front, uh, we don't want to be really coming down this way because of the way the squeegee bends, more of a side to side thing. So just kind of working in the concaves, working epoxy out to the sides and then down towards the front of the board. And now that I have the whole tops and sides covered, uh, covered I'm going to do the edges just as we did before and then tuck them as well just as we did before. Okay, so now that everything is laid down and looking great, uh, I'm going to put in those corner pieces that we mentioned. And so a brush works great. And I'm just going to really get this area. And you can see that you add that corner patch and if there were any slight imperfections, in that seam there, it really just kind of folds them out and gets rid of them. And a brush is great to uh, get rid of any excess anything. So if there's any drips along your rail, a brush is great to clean those up. And then also if there's any areas that aren't tucking so perfectly, again, a brush, you can put a little bit of epoxy on it and just use the brush to pretty much just clean up your work with the squeegee. I found it, it's been, it's a huge help um, to use that brush to clean things up. Glass is laid down, everything's looking great. Everything is nice and evenly soaked out. And so 
At this stage, what I like to do, again with a brush, is just pretty much the final check. I'm going to look over every inch of this board, and if I see any air pockets, or if there's any slight air bubbles that I missed, or I didn't quite wet out enough, I'm going to come in with a brush and just kind of lightly dab the area, and usually that takes care of most of it. Any of these strings, you can see I have some hanging down here. Uh, I'm gonna try to get most of those off the board, but if they're up and past that tape line, I'm not going to worry about them too much because those are going to get trimmed off anyways. And I'm also just going to go around, get down low and look underneath the board and make sure that the glass is wrapped nice onto that tape and being gentle with a brush uh, can help get it back on if there's an area that's giving you a little bit of trouble. And any drips that I see, I'm just going to gently, with a brush, very gently pull the drips out so I don't have to sand them later. All right, so now what we're going to do is let the board start to cure up and Depending on the temperatures, if you're at 77 degrees in about three hours, it's going to be um, almost, it really doesn't cure for a full 24 hours, but you won't be able to tell much difference between three hours and then 24. So just consider at three hours, it's, it's almost fully cured. So I'm going to want to wait about two hours is the epoxy will be, uh, very tacky, uh, but not fully cured. So I'll still be able to cut it extremely easy with a sharp blade. And so that's pretty much what I'm waiting for. To be safe, just check on it every 20 minutes or so. And when it gets to that point where it's no longer wet, no longer really, really sticky, we can take a blade and trim the tape line that we made and also trim out the track boxes because if you don't trim them now it's going to be pretty hard to cut those later with a sharp knife so pretty important or i think it makes things a lot easier and it's pretty important to cut and trim everything at that correct time with a blade and so again that's temperature de dependent so if i were you i would check on the board every 20 minutes or so and once it gets to that consistency, we're going to give it the trim that it needs. Okay, so it's now been a couple hours and you can see that this isn't really sticky anymore. With the glove, uh, it's not sticking to the glove at all, but it's still nowhere near fully cured. And so this is the point where we're going to want to do all the trimming. And so I have a nice sharp razor blade right here. And first I'm going to start with the tracks. And I'm pretty much just going to follow that tape line and it's okay if a little bit of tape gets left behind and caught underneath it's not really going to cause any issues and then come across here and now I'm just going to get under and lift it up and sometimes you might miss a thread and just come back and cut it and so now this should peel up pretty easy and so there you go uh, very quick and easy to do especially when you get the timing just right which is what we're after here uh, you can do this once it's fully cured but it's going to be much more difficult so I highly recommend catching the board at the correct time especially when it comes to cutting the rails along that tape that we applied earlier. So I flipped the board over. I have it sitting on some nice and cushiony pads. You don't have to flip the board over if you don't want to. And you don't want to flip it over too early because then you might get some dents on the bottom of the board. So just be cautious of that. I'm mostly flipping it over just to show you guys what's going on here. So you can see we have our tape line. And what we're going to do is just take the edge of the razor blade and just make sure we're cutting all the glass and just getting a little bit into the foam. We don't want to cut too deeply into the foam. But just like that, get it right next to the tape line. 
And then we're going to go all the way around the board here. Okay, so I've gone all the way around the board and I, I just cut this in half. And if I slowly peel this up here, you can see that we're getting a very, very clean cut line. And so that is why I love to do this. And so keep your blade in hand because most likely you missed a whole bunch of threads. And as we go, we can just kind of stick the blade in there and make sure we aren't pulling anything up and cutting the areas that we missed. Okay, so we're done trimming and now the board is just going to sit. We're going to let it fully cure. And once we're fully cured, we're just going to give that line that we just cut a very light sand just to knock down any rough edges. And then we're going to lightly sand the rails of the board. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but on the deck. So we're gonna do another tape line. We're gonna laminate up the deck. And then once again, trim uh, once we get the board in the same, once the epoxy is kind of sorta cured, we're going to again come with a razor blade and trim. All right, so having the board now fully cured, I've flipped it over and you can see that this little edge here that we cut with the blade, you can hear it kind of catching on my finger here. And so now what we're going to do is sand that down. And so we're just going to be careful to sand. I'm going to sand this all by hand, by the way, with uh, probably 120 grit sandpaper. I want to be careful not to sand into the foam. I want to just sand away the roughness of this fiberglass edge here. And I'm going to be doing that all the way around the board. And then also taking a look at the corners of the board. So this is where we cut and then uh, wrapped up the corners and then applied that patch. And here you can see there's a little bit of rough stuff going around on the corners. I wanna sand that smooth as well because the next layers of glass are going to be coming down and wrapping around onto the underside of the board. And I'm also going to want to give just the rails a nice scuff. I just really want to scuff them uh, so that we can get a decent bond with the next layer going on. So nothing all too fancy, just 120 grit and I just carefully start working that edge. Being careful not to dig in the foam, and I can already feel that it's it's softening quite a bit already. And so that's the goal uh, with that process, going all the way around the board. And then we're going to want to give just the rails a nice sand as well. So all of this area right here, and, and that's pretty simple. Just pretty much just take your paper, get it on there. Nothing too intense, just really cleaning it up a bit and then also making uh, some scuff marks for the next layer to bond to. Okay, so the edge is nice and sanded and I also sanded out the rails so everything's smooth and looking great. And just as we did before, I'm going to add a tape line, uh, but this time on the bottom side of the board. So kind of just where that round rail starts to go is where I'm going to put this tape. And uh, just, just note that when you see me kind of without gloves, I'm not handling the, the fiberglass portion of the board with bare hands. Uh, you always wanna, once you start getting glass on the board, make sure you're handling it with gloves on because you don't want oils from your hand to get on the board. It'll mess up your, it, it can mess up your finish coat. So just be mindful of that. So yeah, just uh, another tape line, just as we did before. And so this time, obviously, when we come to make the cut, we will not be using the blade to cut into the foam. We'll just be feeling for the uh, cured glass with the blade. So a bit easier too to, to do this side. All right, so we're fully taped off here and now I'm going to flip the board over. 
So I'm going to be cutting the glass just as we did before, making sure that the cut ends up right on the tape line. And I'm just going to be glassing the deck just as we did the bottom. It's pretty much the exact same process. The deck is probably a bit easier because it's more of a simple shape to it. And one thing that we're going to do next, because I'm sure some of you are wondering, is what about inserts for binding, straps, um, whatever it is you want to do on the board. I personally do not like to use straps and bindings. I like to just go strapless. Uh, but I know a lot of people do like to use straps, uh, maybe just in the front or the back or, or both. And you can definitely do put in inserts very easily for all those. I am actually going to use just one insert. These are some insert. These are my favorite types of inserts to use. They come with a little plastic coating on them. And I'm going to be using this as an example. I'm going to put this into the board just to show you how to do it. So if you could imagine if you wanted to do some straps up front and some straps in the back, that depends on what kind of straps, how many of these you need, at what spacing, how far apart you want them. So it's a pretty customizable thing. And you can put in a hundred of these if you want to. I don't think you would need to, but if you can put in as many of these as you want, and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's very easy to do, but we're going to do that after the deck is glassed. Uh, so we're not going to worry about those yet. I'll probably just add this one in towards the rear of the board, just to give you an idea as to how it's done. Okay, so as you can see, we have the deck glassed and we wrapped the edges. Uh, the rails down onto the tape that we placed there. So we did the exact same thing we did on the bottom, except we did that on the top this time. And I'm going to wait for that epoxy to get to that kind of semi-cured state. And I'm going to, once again, come with a razor blade and cut right along the tape line. And then I'm just going to let it fully cure and we should be good to go. And so if you are planning to do inserts, after the deck is fully cured is when we're going to th start installing those and i'll show you guys how to do that i'll just put one insert in this board as an example yep so let things cure up and then wait for that correct time to come in and, and trim the rails and then let things fully cure and then we'll be ready to start thinking about inserts okay guys so it's been a couple hours here and this epoxy is at that stage where i'm going to want to trim it with the blade and it's just the same as we did before i'm just going to go right along that tape line but this time we're not cutting into the foam because we already have hardened glass underneath it and we don't want to cut really hard into the glass that's already cured we just want to feel it with the edge of our blade and just lightly uh, go along on top of that and not cut into it. So with that now cut, very satisfying to cleanly remove it from the board. All right, so all trimmed up. You can see here is all the trimmings. Just gonna toss this away. And now I'm just gonna let the board fully cure and then we're going to address putting in inserts, uh, possible board leash plugs. They all follow the same process. So for that example, we're going to use the insert that I showed previously and that is going to be what we do next. Okay, so now is the time where if you're adding inserts to the board, we're going to start to do that process right now. I apologize if you can hear the machine cutting in the background. It's actually the machine that cuts these boards. And so we're cutting a lot of them right now. Um, so I apologize for the noise. So if we're adding inserts, these are stainless M6 inserts. They're absolutely fantastic. You can see there is a protective film over the, f over the threads there. And so we're gonna leave that intact and that will keep epoxy from getting into our thread. And so basically if you know what kind of foot straps you're using, obviously you're going to want the spacing of that foot strap from hole to hole 
and you're going to want to know where you want those on the board or approximately because most boards as you know they usually have multiple places to put the foot pad so you can move it around a bit and so you would need multiple inserts in each location and that's easy to do so these are available on the site you can get as many as you want and they're really great really useful so the basically what we're going to do is route a hole just big enough for the insert to fit into and a couple millimeters deeper than we need for the insert and then we're going to fill that hole with epoxy let that cure up sand it flush and then add a little bit patch of fiberglass over the top of that blend it all in so you can can't even tell that we did it and then once you fully gloss your board and it's finished you'll still be able to see the inserts and you can drill out the glass on top of the insert and drill out that protective covering and then you have all your inserts so it's very easy to do it just takes a couple of little tips to get it done nicely so real realistically the only way to do this properly is to have a router uh, any kind of router really but you definitely need a router in order to get these inserts in there correctly and so you can see the ideal depth for these is to have that hole be two or three millimeters deeper than it than the insert so i'm just kind of lining it up here that looks like a good depth to me and you can always start shallow put in your insert see if you need to go a little bit deeper and then move a little bit deeper if you have to so this is the depth that i'm going to want there you can just kind of see the bit is a bit uh, deeper than the insert itself and before we get started this process applies to leash plugs vent plugs honestly anything you're going to be putting into the board it's going to follow the same process so if you're putting in a board leash plug imagine this being the board leash plug and so on so you know it's almost the exact same thing but uh, this is particularly for inserts so the first thing i'm going to do is just hold it down and then mark out where i need to route so I have a rough idea of a circle about right there. All right, so now I'm ready to go. And so I'm going to plunge right in the center, get it down to depth, and then slowly work its way towards the edges. Okay, pretty easy there and I believe we have, yep. And so that fits right in. It's just the size it needs to be. And we're a couple millimeters recessed into the board. So coming down for a little bit of a closer look, you can see that the insert fits right in. It's just the correct size and we're a couple millimeters deeper than it has to be. We don't want this really big because when we pour in epoxy, it's going to get a little bit warm as it cures and we don't want it to get too hot and start to melt the foam. So as long as you have the hole being as small as it has to be or as big, just enough to fit the insert, you won't have that issue to deal with. So I now have some thickened epoxy here and it just helps if it's thick. It doesn't have to be, but especially when the deck has some sort you know the concaves and the curves to it some thickened epoxy can help hold itself in place later on so all i'm really going to do is just slowly pour in just a little bit of epoxy and it doesn't take much filling in the area and i'm just going to lightly work and tap the area just in case there's any air bubbles down in there make sure that they all come out 
And so that right there is pretty much what, what we want to do. You can see it's completely filled and it's overflowing onto the glass a little bit and it's raised. So there's a little bit extra epoxy, which is kind of just lifted above the board surface, which is fantastic because once this cures, we're going to come in and carefully sand off just the raised area. So that is just about what we want. I'm going to add just a little bit more. And so one thing that you can do if you want is at 20 minutes in, you can come and check. And if any of these need a little bit more epoxy, you can just put a drop on the end of your stick and just add it to it just like that. So that is how you glue in the insert and once this cures we're going to come clean up the, the area okay so nice and smooth I can't even feel that it was there so that's what we're looking for and so in addition what I did after I had it smoothed down is I just very lightly sanded the area around it and that's more so just to provide a surface for the patch to bond to so I cut out a little tiny patch here uh, a bit larger than the hole because we're going to uh, very lightly sand away the extra glass edges to kind of blend it into the deck. Uh, but if you had, say, many, many inserts, like four or five of them all together, one patch to kind of cover all of those is what I would recommend doing. So I'm just going to place it here and then just use a little bit of epoxy. And we're just going to wet this out. All right, so that's about it. That'll do it for the patch. And so once this cures up, we're going to come over this area and just sand it completely smooth. Okay, so the patch over the insert is now fully cured. And what we want to do now is completely sand the board smooth because we're going to be applying a gloss coat of epoxy next. And the smoother the board is before you do that, the smoother the finish will come out. So pretty important stage here. Definitely want to take a good amount of time and put, to put into the sand in because now we're getting to the point where it's the final finish of the board and that's where you want to spend most of your time. And a couple things we want to pay good attention to is the edge that we had cut with the tape line. We want to sand that down pretty smooth flipping the board over any sort of drips and runs that we can see right here. We want to make sure we sand all those out. Pretty much absolutely any rough area, we want to sand it down, but we want to be careful not to sand into the fiberglass. However, if you don't have the orbital sander by hand, you can do it pretty easily as well. So you can see this main, this edge right here. Really the goal is just to knock down that edge and have it feather out into the actual board so it's, it's smooth and then that way once you finish it up you can't even see the patch was ever there. And so we just want to focus on those high spots and just very slowly take them down. All right, so just about a minute later, you can see that you pretty much can't see the patch anymore because we've completely blended it in with the board. So as far as inserts go, that's how you install them into the deck. And the last thing we're going to do is obviously drill out uh, so we can get a, later on get a screw into the insert. And we're going to do that at the very end, right before we paint after the gloss coat because we don't want to do it now because then the gloss coat will get into the insert obviously so that is the easiest way to put in insert and so across for example the deck if you're going by hand just a little bit of light passes going across the entire deck a to scuff it up so we have something to bond to and b to take away any of the rough areas So 
So we're just focusing on just getting a pretty broad sanding job here and not really putting too much pressure in one little spot because that will sand through the glass. We just wanna just roughly smooth everything out. It's very simple, it's not rocket science sanding, it just takes a little bit of time. And so that is what we wanna do next. And so once we've sanded both the deck and the bottom of the board, probably a good time to start focusing on the rails and the edges. So you can see we have that tape line or that line where we cut with the razor blade. And just like with the patch, we wanna just focus on the high spot and work on getting that smoothed and feathered into the rest of the board without sanding into the glass of the actual board. So just take your time and just continually work all the way around. You will eventually get it down. All right, so the board is nice and sanded evenly, no rough edges. Everything is ready for our final gloss coats of epoxy. So I'm gonna start with the bottom. I don't think it really matters which side you start with, but uh, we'll start with the bottom. And we need to cover up the tracks just like we did when we glass the board. We don't want epoxy getting down into them. So again, masking tape. And we're just gonna place that there. Make sure it is stuck down really nicely to our edges. So again, uh, we really don't want epoxy getting down in there. So I am going to carefully make sure that this tape is nicely sealed. Okay, and again, once we have these taped off, we're going to do a tape line going around the board, just like we did when we were glassing it. And the reason for that is we don't want drips of epoxy to come and go down and then they'll cure on the bottom side of the board as a whole bunch of drips. And it is a complete disaster having to sand all those off. So if you put on a tape line and as the, again, we're gonna wait for that epoxy to get to that semi cured state and then you'll just remove the tape and you'll have a very crisp clean line going all the way around the board with no drips. And then that will pretty much allow you to flip the board right over and then do the other side in the same manner. So it makes things a lot easier. So definitely be putting a tape line around the board. All right, so we're taped off here and the board is smooth. I've made sure that there's no dust on the board. Uh, I've brushed it off with a clean brush. I've also used an air gun to spray off anything that might miss. Uh, just do your best to get this as dust free as possible because that'll just make for a better finish. So after spending a little bit of time doing that, we are ready to put on our gloss coat of epoxy. Okay, so applying the coat is pretty easy and straightforward. And we're going to start with just a good amount right down the center. So what I like to do is first just kind of get the track area done and out of the way with because I don't want to accidentally have the brush affect the tape in any way. So once I get that done, really the initial goal is just to somewhat spread this out. Again, working from the center towards the sides. And I didn't pour everything out. I still have a good amount left in the cup. And so I now pretty much have this flat portion of the board done. And I find I'm going to need some more to do this side of the board here. So that's why I like to just leave a little bit into the cup because you can just pour and spread as you need it different areas and I'm just making sure just to get some epoxy pretty much everywhere here um, not really focusing so much on the rails just more so trying to get the majority of the surface here with a nice coat of epoxy and once we get everything coated we're going to come and do a few patterns with the brush to smooth everything out and get a nice even coat. 
So now I'm just kind of lightly getting these rails here and just making sure that they are wet with epoxy. And that's why I like having a little bit extra in the cup because you can just kind of dip into it as you need it and make sure that all your surfaces have epoxy on them. All right, so now that everything has a relatively even coat of epoxy, I'm going to make sure that it actually is even now. And so what uh, I like to do is just start in a corner and just with relatively light brush pressure, we're going to diagonally get the whole board here. And so once we have the board, I'm going to again start from the back and go the other way diagonally. And so once we have the board done like that, now is a good time to just take a look at things. If you see any large pieces of dust or maybe a bristle from the brush, right now is a great time to remove that. I just saw a slight bristle from the brush there. And so I just picked that out and everything else looks pretty good. And so now what I wanna do is just go around the rails again because those diagonals tend to push some excess epoxy down and around the rails. And we wanna clean that up and even that out a good bit. And so now with the rails brushed over again, I'm going from the very back of the board to just come down the center all the way to the front and then back down again. And we're going to cover the whole board like this. And that's pretty much going to do it as far as brushing. So with the straight strokes done, now I'm just going to come and do one final pass along the rails. Again, just cleaning up any excess drips that might have emerged. And once we get that, I am now done and I'm just looking for any imperfections that might need any fixes and it looks pretty good. So what I would recommend is coming back in about 15 minutes or so and you might need to give those rails another pass because some drips might accumulate and it, it certainly helps to smooth those out before it cures up and so once this epoxy in about a couple hours once it gets to that it's not fully cured but it's not sticky stage uh, i'm going to pull the tape line and that'll just make removing the tape a lot easier than once it's fully cured so that's pretty much it. Just leave this board alone in an undisturbed area so like no dust comes and lands on it. And that is how we apply the coats. Okay, so taking a zoomed in look here, you can see the tape pretty much did its job is uh, it just deflected all the drips onto the tape. And so instead of having those end up on our board, if we just start to peel you can see you, you get a very, very clean part. All right, so taking a look here, you can see things are turning out pretty good and that tape line came off nice and cleanly. And so now I'm just going to let this side of the board fully cure and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm probably not gonna film that because it's literally the exact same thing just on the other side. So we're gonna to wanna to put a tape line going all the way around the board and then follow the same brushing techniques on the top side. And then once that is fully cured, we're going to get into the final sanding and painting. Okay, so the top coat is now fully cured up and before we get into the sanding and especially before we get into the painting process, this is when you want to drill out any inserts that you have in the board. So again, we just have this one example in the back to show how it's done. And you can see through the camera right where the insert actually is. And so I'm just going to take a 
normal drill bit and center it up the best I can and then just slowly start to drill down and you'll hear and feel when you hit the top of the insert and that's fine and even if you do drill out just a little bit of the very top of the insert so a little bit of metal shavings come out that's fine you definitely don't want to drill all the way down into it or halfway into it but do expect to drill possibly a little bit into it and uh, don't panic about that so we're just going to drill down and then through that protective cap that we saw earlier. And so you can see just about there is we are through and there's a little bit of the plastic cap left. So I'm just going to drill just a tiny bit more. All right. So there we go, you can hear I kind of got a little bit of the top of the insert there and we're looking pretty good. So we're drilled out and you can now see any M6 bolt fits right in. So again, pretty easy to put inserts anywhere you want them in the board and that's how it's done. So at this point, I mean your board is ready to go in the water if you want to use it like this. I always like this particular board I'm going to sand and then I'm going to paint it uh, for a more, well, for a professional look. Uh, so you can really do whatever you want to do, really comes down to you. And so for the sanding and painting process, which I do recommend because of the way the board is constructed, you know, we have the seam lines, the tracks on the bottom. So if we give it a nice paint job, it'll really, really look nice. And so to get the sanding process started is I start with 120. I wouldn't really start any rougher than that. And we want to just start sanding into that gloss coat that we put on there. We don't want to sand down into the fiberglass. If we do, I would recommend stopping and then coat that area again, or maybe even coat the entire board again, and then start sanding. And so we're just looking to pretty much sand the board out nice and even. And so I'll do the top and then the bottom with 120 and then I'll start to work on the sides. And again, on the sides is where you want to be careful. Very easy to sit, start sanding into the glass there. And so usually the sides, I'll just grab the paper like this and just sand it by hand. We saw a little bit of that earlier, but that's how I recommend doing the sides to avoid burning into the fiberglass. And so after 120, we get the whole board smoothed out. I'm then going to just up it to 220 grit and if optional if you want you can go up to 320 but i've found that 220 leaves a nice sanded finish to the board and you can leave the board with just a sanded finish and use it like that or what i'm going to do in this case is once we get up to 220 and we're happy with how the board looks i'm going to go with paint i'm just going to go with a nice white bright paint and it should have this board looking phenomenal. Okay, so I've just been working on this bottom portion of the board for a good bit with the 120. And again, so we wanna be careful. I'm with the orbital sander, I'm pretty much just hitting the flat areas. So up in here, all this is flat. So that's safe to hit with this. This angle right here is nice and flat. So we're getting into that. And then I'm now getting into the point where I want to start focusing in on the angles and curves. So this area right here, I would stay away from this with any sort of power sander. Could be, you could easily go sand right through it if you're not paying attention. So by hand is definitely the best way to go. So basically, depending on, uh, you can do it by feel, and I can feel this is very, very smooth. And also, if you set up a couple of lights in the correct positions, you can, with your eyes, see the reflections, and you'll be able to see a low spot that hasn't been sanded yet. And if you see any of those, just keep working the area until it's nice and smooth and you don't see the low spot anymore. And so I flipped the board around here and so we're up in the front where the double concave is and so you can see this bright area right here where the light's hidden. And so you can just see in the light that it's not quite smooth and it hasn't even been sanded yet. And so with just a little bit of effort, 
you can see we've now pretty much taken that down and it's nice and smooth so that's pretty much what i recommend doing especially on these curved areas is just go in by hand uh, you can make pretty pretty easy work of it and by you going slow by hand as you avoid the potential problem of having to sand through into the fiberglass because we really want to try to avoid that all right so i spent a good amount of time getting this board perfectly smooth and it's sanded nicely up to 220 grit and so it's time to start painting and so i'm going to paint this board and this is where pretty much everyone will probably go their own way. Uh, the easiest, simplest way is spray paint. Off right here, this Rust-Oleum. I've used this on other boards in the past. It's really great, it lasts a long time, and it, it, it looks great, it holds up very well. And so, so you can get a really good finish with just spray paint coming out of the cans like this. Uh, it, takes a little bit of practice and getting used to and the biggest key is just to go very lightly with the paint don't put a heavy coat on at all ever so go light coats it might take you one or two or three light coats to build up a nice paint job and so i recommend going light and going slow so spray paint definitely the easiest way to go and so what i'm going to do is i have uh, some other paint and I'm going to thin this down and I use a actual paint gun, a little spray gun. And so I'm actually going to spray it. It's basically the same thing as using this, except uh, I get to mix up my own paint. And so as far as colors go, I definitely recommend sticking towards light colors. We don't wanna paint this thing, for example, we don't wanna paint it black because it's going to be out on hot summer days in the sun and the sun is gonna heat up the black paint. It's gonna heat up the board and that can cause problems with the board that's why most boards you see and surfboards they've always been kind of white is because they don't get hot in the sun so i would definitely stick towards lighter colors i'm just going to paint this thing white okay so we painted the bottom side of the board here and you can see it's really looking really nice and so now i'm just going to let this side fully cure and let the paint dry before i flip it and then paint the other side and i didn't bother masking off the tracks because i'm painting so lightly that paint's not really going to run down into there and cause any problems and they still need a little cleaning up to do at the very very end so i left those as they were and i would also do the same probably for inserts on the top if if you're painting so thick and heavy that paint is going to rush down into the inserts you're painting way too much. You gotta go so thin and so light that it, it doesn't do that. So that uh, is something that I wouldn't worry about when painting. All right, so that is it for the build. We have both sides of the board painted up. It came out very, very nice. Nice, clean, bright, white finish. And that's pretty much it. So again, with the painting, you can pretty much do whatever you want if you want different colors, different designs. You can you can go crazy with the painting and you don't have to use the paints I used or paint it the method I painted it in. You can really do whatever you want. I just kind of do the easiest method here for most people to, to do themselves. So that is it for this build. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you might've learned a thing or two here. And it's pretty easy to build these boards. They're very big. But uh, with this method, I think it's a, it turns out great in the end. And again, this was the four foot six version. There should be a five foot, a five, six, and then a six as well. The sizes may vary, but there are other sizes. And all the weights and measurements and volumes and all that good stuff will be, all that information will be with the board on the website.